probably I, I thought I was arguing against Lauren Southern actually. I know, aren't you disappointed? <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> we haven't talked since the Boogaloo stream, my friend. We got a chat. Basically every way. I think that women essentially have kind of two trajectories in life. They can be mothers and prostitutes. I think that's, those are really the main tracks. <laughs>
uh, for this discussion. Can I respond or does somebody else need to talk? I think we're doing opening statements. Well, I'll go first. Even though I'm conservative, uh, you know, I kind of have a different viewpoint. I think there's a war on men and women. And I think that you can just prove it. Why you say, how is there a war on women? If you're on the conservative side, well, you look at Leah Thomas, who swam on the men's team for three years, was ranked 457th and then got to take gender hormone therapies and compete against the women. So in my mind, that's against women. And also, I think abortion, uh, letting women get an abortion is a war on women because that's actually killing half the babies would be women. So that's actually murdering women. And then on top of that, the idea of feminism is a war on women by making women work in the workforce their whole life instead of having a family. I think women are meant to be mothers. It's their job to have babies. It's their job to do uh, traditional family roles. And so this whole feminism movement is a war on women. Now, obviously, I think it's, uh, you know, the trans movement, too, is a big war on women because it's 72 genders versus men and women. So. I would say that equally that men and women, you know, biologic males and biological females have a war against him, against uh, whatever you want to call it, maybe the gay mafia. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But it's uh, uh, something is there is a war waging on biological sex because they want every kid to be indoctrinated and sexualized at a young age so that they have gender confusion and uh, body dysmorphia. And so that they take, you know, hormone blockers or puberty blockers and change their uh, you know, gender for the rest of their lives. So. I think when you look at the the entire gender war, you know, they can't even define what is a woman. They had to change it in, in uh, Webster's Dictionary to the opposite of a man, basically. So, yes, there's a war on both biological sexes. And I think it's pretty simple. I know Britain won't agree with this, but they said in kindergarten cop, uh, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. And I think it's that simple. So I think there is a war on both sexes, even though I'm conservative. Uh, I think there's a bigger war on men, but I, I still think there's a war on biological females. Yeah, if I could jump in on that. I also am inclined to say that there is a war on women. And before I knew the exact topics, how this debate would be broken down, I also interpreted it to be a discussion about like transgender rights. And I think that if you go and ask these people, these lefty types like Vosh, and they will outright tell you that their goal is to abolish gender. I've had these debates with these people. And I think that that's a real mistake. I think that there are innate differences between men and women, behaviorally, as well as biologically. And I really despise that the transgender identity and like whether or not dysphoria exists within some population has been like weaponized as a way to destroy the concept of gender. Like, moreover, I think that when you look at the ways in which women are discriminated against in like the workplace and whatnot, I think what you find is that really there are these innate differences and they're contributing towards lower pay, but for very good reason. Like women, I think, hold a civilizational burden to have children and to care for children when they're in infancy. And that's difficult and it's hard and it should be lauded. And that's why you see these lower wages. Um, I also think that like there's real virtue in having boundaries to the gender identities that exist. Like I think that in order for something to have meaning or value, it can't be something that anyone can just opt into. It has to have restrictions. And so I think the desire to destroy those boundaries and those restrictions is also a kind of desire to like destroy the potential virtue within the archetypes themselves. But you know, I think that's just one side of it. And the other side of it is that you have people who have like rightly observed that there are all these difficulties with incorporating women into the workforce and into politics. But I think that like, they're just taking this in the complete wrong direction and they want another kind of war on women where they wanna bring them back to like medieval times, bring them back into the home. And while that's valuable in some ways, I think that in the modern economy where human capabilities extend far beyond just you know, your muscle strength, women have a lot to contribute politically and, you know, intellectually and whatnot. And what we need to do is learn how to manage female pathology, which scales across the internet, in the same way that we've learned to manage male pathology through our institutions. And we need to do that so that women can contribute without also corrupting or making the public square worse. And we from the right. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll say like mine. I'll do it in. first. Hang on, I'm... hang on. We already heard from a girl on the right. You're on the right. You needed to let me go first. All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure you have a lot of great things to say. Okay. But I, but I want to talk first. So um, 
my position, I guess, is probably the most extreme on this side. I know I probably I, I thought I was arguing against Lauren Southern, actually. I know. Aren't you disappointed? <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> we haven't talked since the Boogaloo stream, my friend. We got a chat. It's been, it's been a long, yeah, it's been a long time. Well, we talked a little bit during the Thought War as well. I don't know if you recall that, but we, we talked a little during that as well. Um, but so anyway, so I, I'm kind of the oddball, I guess, in the group. Good morning, by the way. And uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. I think it's going to be a fun debate. Um, I just want to say, wait, that did I, you just say good morning? Yeah, I just woke up like 10, 20 minutes ago. Classic so, gamer degenerate. Move. Disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. Oh uh, yeah. You're one to talk, you know, yeah, a lot exactly. of disgusting. Your whole life is disgusting. But anyway, so listen, I, I want to say this, so. <laughs> I want to say this, we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, I think that there is not a war against women. I think the war is against men. And I think the problem is that we are not waging a war against women. I think that women are the author of most of the problems in the society. I think that women's liberation um, starting a couple hundred years ago is the beginning of the end of Western civilization. I think that women being educated, women going into the workforce, I think that women uh, raising young men, I think that prostitutes running our country and women being elevated through affirmative action, I think it's completely wrecking the country. And um, basically every way. I think that women essentially have kind of two trajectories in life. They can be mothers and prostitutes. I think that's, those are really the main tracks throughout history that women become. Um, they're really defined by their sexuality as opposed to men. Men are sort of intermittently sexual. Women are thoroughly sexual. They're defined by that relationship with men. And so I think they can either do that within the binds of marriage and do that being a mother and having children, or they could do that selling their sexuality in some way, which is kind of what they do all the time in the modern society. And we don't think of it always that way, but uh, if you look at it, that's kind of what they're doing. So I would say that there's not a war against women. Women are being elevated. And we talked about this in the last one. I think Alex Stein and uh, Doobie and uh, our girl Stardust were there for that one. I think the war is against men. And that's really the problem. The war should be against women and sort of reducing their role in society back to, I think, their biological disposition, which is to be uh, mothers and homemakers. So uh, so that's my position. But I recognize that's probably not the position of anybody else on our side, but that's my position. So my position is basically to say that that elevation you speak of is actually the war on women. Women are being sold this idea that you're going to be happier, more fulfilled being an HR rather than say just going to university just to go to university and then, you know, being a mother after, because a lot of people just do that. A lot of women just go to school just to, you know, maybe meet a mate. That's a great place to meet someone. If you want someone with econ economic standing is someone, maybe a doctor, a lawyer who is going to go to university. And that's a good way of meeting them and also being socially elevated, I guess, is the way a lot of, you know, people used to think of university and a lot of women used to go to university just for social elevation rather than a career. But women are now being sold this idea that you're not going to be fulfilled. You're going to be depressed if you stay at home. You're going to be depressed if you don't have a career. When a lot of times we see women are actually, once they've gone up in that career, they hit their mid thirties, they haven't had a child yet. And that's kind of when this depression kind of starts lingering in of the idea of I'm not married yet. I'm not, you know, in this position that say a lot of society would have said I should be and I kind of want to be, but now I can't. So the war on women is the idea being sold to women that a career is more fulfilling than other aspects of womanhood that you would generally think of being part of womanhood. Any thoughts from Doobie or Stardust? Uh, sure, I can give my statement. Um, so I myself would probably not use the language that there is a war on women, but uh, there is a long history in most places of socially and legally restricting women's rights and freedoms. And while things have gotten massively better through the decades for women, there are still areas where women lack the agency and freedom that men have. As far as this idea about uh, whether women should work or not, it has rarely been the case in history that women didn't work. 
In fact, the, the only people who actually had that privilege were wealthy women. Um, and in a lot of traditional societies, it wasn't just women who worked, but children worked too. Um, so that's a, that, that whole, um, uh, whole uh, idea Home of making women- is a job. Just, just putting right, that but out there. I, un- I understand that. A job. I understand that. But, but if we're talking historically, right? It's it, it, beyond homemaking. Women historically did work unless they were wealthy. When they were wealthy, they were able to be a homemaker primarily. But in most cases, women and their children would work from a very young age. Um, and I also I don't deny that men face unique pro- problems as well. Um, however, the problems that men face, um, like stifling emotions, higher suicide rates. Uh, failure to be believed as sexual assault victims are not privileges that that benefit women. Yeah, if I can jump in really quickly after Stardust, I, like my great grandmother, uh, her mother gave birth to her in a field and then like wrapped her in a towel, took her into the house, went back out and like finished the day's harvest. Yeah. So, yeah, and children absolutely work. Yeah. And decades that, ago, children that's a different were... kind of working because you're working on your property, on your... This but is working like a in the farm is like, very labor-intensive. Yeah, it's much I, I more know. labor-intensive than a lot of jobs today, so... Well, yeah, but that's that's the essence of labor. We're having... We're selling the idea to women that you want to, you know, just uh, write emails for the rest of your life, and that's going to be, you know, more fulfilling than, say, having kids and working in yeah, the field I, and I actually don't know, owning I don't know something. I mean, doing, what, I don't know we could say the same thing that. about men. Maybe, maybe it would be more fulfilling for a lot of men to just work in the field and not be inside and typing emails and all that, right? Well, everyone can has confirm. sold this. Everyone has sold the idea that just, like, you know, maximizing money so you can buy mm-hmm. Funko Pops or whatever is, like, the key to success in life. And I think most people realize as they get older that that's not true. And a lot of women who are very, like, career-oriented, they realize this, and then they drop out of their career earlier than men do. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're all agreeing that capitalism is garbage, yeah. which I'm 1,000% no, behind. I'm not agreeing no. to that. I, no. well, I'm not agreeing to that. I, 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 don't, I don't think that capitalism is garbage, but I do think there's something mm-hmm. to the idea that there is... Um, when you talk about, okay, women have to be mothers in the home with the children all day and men have to go out and work the wagey nine to five, that also isn't tradition. I think that's a a kind of silly idea that the right have developed because they base a lot of their social constructs around the 50s. Whereas I think, um, you know, the, the whole idea of the nuclear family it kind of defeats the community. It should be a community working together, mothers all working and raising children together. The men should be including their children in their work. It used to be super common for kids to go out and, you know, work with dad in the field, go on the tractor, enjoy that, partake in that. And the idea that, you know, women should just be in this box where they spend all day with the kid, it's good, it's fun, it's it's wonderful. Um, also takes away from a father's fullness of life where he would want to go and bring his child to enjoy whatever his work life was, but it's definitely been a restructuring of our society of making everyone work in cubicles and have this nine to five travel, got to make work my entire life instead of family and community and working with the people around me. So there are, there are real things that you guys are pointing to. Well, what I would say, what what I would say is that is again, that, that you, you may not be wrong that men used to spend more time with, with children because children would go out and work with them and children used to work at a much earlier age, but there are benefits to children not working, right? Like oh, workplace saying, injuries. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying you know, bring like, your child to, you know, the factory. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, but, to, but again, hang, hang there, there, it used to be, it used to be that like, the it, it used to be, you, you know, yeah. There, there would be like it used to be that there there would be like um, people who would work in tobacco and you'd have children as young as like six helping, uh, you know, uh, work with tobacco and stuff like that. And so, so I think there are benefits to um, to children not working. Uh, anymore but i definitely see that not what i definitely well but. yeah no yeah. no i get i get I, I yeah i see i i i may have misinterpreted so i'm sorry no, <laughs> so. No, no, lauren, lauren you, said, you Brent, mentioned one, one that you before, were before you start brent start as if you can turn your audio down just a slight smidge and then brent go ahead yeah uh lauren um so I'm, I'm hearing you complain about people getting forced into cubicles and having their traditional ways of life destroyed and people being forced to work outside of the home yeah, that all that is happening, and they're being forced to work for people who aren't them, who own property, who are capitalists. I, I'm I'm not seeing how you're not we, making we the don't, connection. Listen, we, between I, like I, the fact that all of these things you don't point. like, 
Or, yeah, all no, these no, no. things it's, you don't like all, are we, being we, done we, for profit. Real capitalism has never been tried. No, of course there are problems with capitalism. It's a complex, broken <laughs> system, but it's the best we've got. And a lot of what we're dealing with is corporatism and also government pushes and social pushes towards certain types of work styles and certain workforces. And a lot of, you know, the big companies with the cubicles tend to be far more favored by governments and government contracts than small businesses, which families used to be able to yeah. run together. Well, of course, this is a, because a if you're powerful, that, you take a lot of, that of the has, state. A lot of that has to do with government intervention. So when yes. you see all these yeah. policies come into place that are promoting uh, corporatism and kind of hurting these smaller community jobs and small businesses, you, you don't sit there and blame capitalism. You can, but that's a really weak point, in my opinion. Capitalism is a part of it. I, I would, I would disagree with you. It's I think a it's a very strong point. It's a lot of social understand issues. It. Oh, I just don't understand, I guess. This is the real yeah. world. No, it's, it's a tough thing I'm to get your mind wrapped around. It takes years to figure it out. Well, you know, instead, because really of capitalism, instead of people working for... So sorry. but I don't think we've heard from Doobie at all. Doobie, any thoughts? I do have thoughts, actually. I was, Go ahead. Um, so uh, I think as we just, I, I was actually like really interested in what you guys were saying. So I think as we just heard here, um, I think there's room to argue that there is an attack on women from both sides of the political spectrum. Right? I think that if you're on the right, you could argue that the concept of womanhood itself is being dismantled in academia through a gender ideology that's being pushed on children in schools, being pushed on the rest of us through corporate policy and censorship. And if you're on the left, uh, you could argue that the overturning of Roe v. Wade is the latest attack on women um, from a religious right wing attempting to reassert its ownership of women's bodies, lifestyles, et cetera. Um, I think that those positions, though, are kind of missing the point. Um, I think the truth is uh, that, his, that women his, have historically uh, been socially and politically oppressed or at least conditioned to fill subservient roles uh, to further like a patriarchal norm in our society. Um, whether or not you think that's a good thing, right, that, that uh, they're supposed to be in these roles naturally um, is, I think, just going to boil it down to like your preferences and your upbringing, whatever the fuck. Um, but I think that uh, the reality is that we've seen that oppression kind of fall away. Well, I'd consider it oppression. We'd, we'd see, we've seen that fall away. And well, see, guys, I, well, I, well, I'd argue that the there is like an overcorrection in some areas um, where you have uh, women getting basically affirmative action that's pushing them into academia um, and, and, uh, and leaving men behind in a lot of cases. Um, and, or celebrating them and, and attacking the concept of, of masculinity while, while uh, pushing women forward as a girl boss, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, think, I think there has been overcorrection in some areas, right? And there is like uh, work to do in other areas, but I don't think it makes sense to call any of this war on women. It just seems like the culture is changing. Our understanding of uh, women's role in society is changing. Our understanding of like men's role in society is changing, but there's not, there's not a war here. It's the, just, the question is, is it for the better? I think that's going to boil down to, so, so Nick, for example, um, Nick would probably say that, hey, you're teaching these women that they should be out there grinding away nine to five and not at home raising children, keeping the house uh, clean, et cetera, et cetera, uh, learning all the, all the good things that, that come with motherhood, et cetera. You teaching them to, to go out and do that, to leave their households and, and to go out and, and slave away for these capitalist scumbags or whatever, that's, that's actually an attack on women. Right? That's not you presenting them more possibilities. That's you giving them chains in, in the, like the disguise of like freedom and, and, and like uh, choices or options or whatever the fuck, right? All you're really doing is, is enslaving them to the same capitalist like uh, monster that the rest of us are So then wouldn't that not be when a war on women, just a war on I think on the women sexes? should be enslaved, but just by their husbands instead of... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, well, okay, it but it, but oh, the boy. point that Doobie is making is that, again, uh, in response to what Lauren just said, uh, the point that Doobie is making is that um, w women are in in that way they're being um, they're basically in the subservient role, right? And it may be and it, it may be true. Yes, it certainly is true that there is um, uh, there are disadvantages to being a man in society, but those disadvantages for men often negatively affect women in addition, right? Whereas it, the, the disadvantages towards women don't really affect men in the same way. Wait, wait, well, wait, but wait, the wait, thing wait. is, is That's that like... women's role historically has been that way because women are cooperative and men are competitive. That That is distilled down the essence of the male and Well, female women are nature. competitive against one another, though. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Can't hang on. Think of, not, forget no, about men that. Are cooperative. They're side Nick, by Nick. side. But not to are, one another. Yeah, yeah, women are extremely competitive. Just to be sure that we can hear. Nick, are you married? Everybody's talking simultaneously, and then nobody can hear anybody. So just one at a time. Nick, are you married? Yeah, I'm married to the game. Shut the fuck up. No, you're not. <laughs> now, well, here's no the need thing. To cuss. What, no need to cuss. First of all, what you're saying. Marie, did you have yeah, a question, Marie? 
Did Marie, yeah. did you no, have a I question? didn't have a question. I, a question. I Lauren, go ahead. Lauren. No, Nick, I assume you agree there are outliers to that rule. Like there are men who are more cooperative than competitive, although outliers, vice versa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we have we have this uh, trans individual in the debate, and you'd certainly have lesbians. So yeah, of course there are outliers, um, but talking about the general rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just I, I'm wondering in within if, if let's say society had a general rule that were in line with your ideals for what you want society to be like would you still allow for room for outliers so like let's say a, a woman who's like a margaret thatcher type really wants to partake in business or whatever and maybe she's even you know infertile can't have kids no one wants to marry her would you still allow space in your society for her to you know kind of partake uh, no, no. And I think that historically, uh, that's not true. I, I think historically, these exceptions are not allowed. And I think there's a danger in allowing the exceptions, because in cases like that, it almost concedes the principle. And it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, society is clunky. And, you know, these are the kinds of things where you can't tell the society, well, women are mostly like this, but you know, some are not really and some can do what well, they want. The, the, the problem is that society, society let him, let him creates finish, its own finish. ideals. Let him hey, okay. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for, for sticking out for me like that. Um, yeah, so I, I think that women should not be telling men what to do. And I think it sets a bad example. I think that, um, you know, and, and this is what you'll hear all the time from women and from feminists is, well, what about, you know, the biker girl? What about the girl that is really good at math or whatever? And yeah, that's great at everything. But uh, because of that, we've set this example where now everybody thinks that there's no principle at work here, that we're all individuals and everybody's got a limitless capability. And so everybody should have a limitless opportunity. And that's created a completely co-ed egalitarian society. Um, there needs to be a society that is clearly bifurcated between the domain of the men and the women. And I agree with you. I think that you're right about the nuclear family and you're right about um, sort of what we consider women's work. And, and I'm not saying women should be necessarily in the house, but they should be in the domain of women. They should be the nest builders Nick, with the other women in the community, so, like they were in the Nick, ancient just, days and historically. But they okay, should but not just be just 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 men as lawyers and doctors. Ancient days and historically, right, we could look at the Greece where men were fucking little boys' fives, right? And this was totally socially acceptable, right? So I like I don't know why we'd appeal to history and how things used to be in ancient societies, right? We're in, we're in 2022, and I don't want to just a current year meme, but it is a current year. Why would we be uh, shaping our society based on shit that happened 2,000 years ago? I'm not saying I mean, that we I'll, should I'll base it on with... that because it's old. I'm saying that that's the, I'm well, yeah, saying well, that give me a reason. that's the but model. It, it, I'm it, saying it, that nuclear family is anomalous compared to yeah. the long view of history. We should do these things because they're consistent with our nature, not necessarily because they're old, although they are old. Well, why isn't pederasty consistent with our nature? Consistent. What's that? Yeah, there, we why can argue that a lot of- consistent with our nature? You know, the, 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 uh, in ancient Greece, Older men would take young boys as like uh, as like um, apprentices, and part of that relationship was them putting olive oil on the young boy's thighs and fucking it. Right. Okay. So like, I'm not sure what that has to do. Yeah. Can with I can that. I bring well, the conversation you know, back on the track here? Oh, look, if we're making an appeal to the way that right, things let's, used let's, to be in tradition, have, have, listen, I got I got 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Lauren. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Lauren. Um, Nick, I, I think you might be setting yourself up for failure there because what you're going to do is th there's always going to be these outliers that exist and you're going to have women that are genuinely completely miserable in the sort of family role, right? Uh, yes, like they you. will be the exception. No, I, I love being a mother. They will be the exception and they're going to want to read. They're going to want to partake and necessarily in their misery, they'll probably start some sort of feminist uprising so that they can partake rather than naturally just being allowed to partake where and when they can and compete with men where and when they can uh, while the natural social order still stays in place within your ideals. The thing is, though, women cannot compete with men. If women try to compete with men, they would physically get killed. There's no woman. It depends on how they're competing. It depends on what arena. Hey, Eric, I want to make one point. I want to just make one point, though, that women do have a lot of power, though. They, they hold it in their pussy because this is why there's an old Chinese proverb that says, a key that'll open every lock is a master key, but a lock that will open with any key is a shitty lock. So what I'm saying is women, even a fat, ugly woman can get laid a million times, but a fat, ugly guy can't. So women do have, you know, when you talk about the war on women, they actually have a lot of power 
uh, of the puss. So that's something men don't have. Yeah. I think the last thing I mean, I think there's, there's a point there, that, there, that Nick is no. making. That, that's, that's your really issue, interesting not theirs. Here. And it goes back to like the historical reasons for why women were not involved in much of the economy. And it's because for like much of human history, women could not effectively contribute to most important economic and political things. Women could not wield a sword as well as men. They could not till the fields as well as men. And so like, it makes perfect sense that you wouldn't like have women leading kingdoms because the majority of the population would not have built up respect for her through like, going to battle with her, right? But the fact of the matter is now is that like our modern economy has shifted such that we rely less on physical muscles and the economy relies more on intellectual developments. And so like there's all of this research into how women exist in STEM and in various fields of higher learning and contribution to the economy. And the reality is that like women do not, they still don't take up all of those high prestigious spots. They're not the ones winning the awards. Men are still doing that, but that's not to say that women aren't contributing anything. In fact, women's like contribution to the economy now is massive. And if you want to have a civilization that is powerful, you need to harness all of it. And so here's the thing. You can have a civilization of us women in the home and there'll be great homemakers. But when you compare that to a culture and a civilization that knows how to utilize women as homemakers and as mothers, but also allows them to contribute to the economy when they're able to, that civilization will be far superior to the one that doesn't. And it's really that simple at the end of the day. We wanna create things that last. And the way you do that is you find a way to include women. Um, yeah, here, okay, here. Wait, wait, wait. So, sorry, I'm really curious about Nick's thoughts on this because you say, yeah, allow women to compete. But the problem always has been when we allow women to compete, we do have to give them too often like a handicap to allow them to compete with men, where Nick was saying women will generally lose. So what I would say my argument is, Nick, is let them lose. Allow them to compete in egalitarian yeah. society and let them lose and let people learn that social rule on their own without any, any of the handicaps. Sure, if you want to go join the WW or whatever wrestling thing against men, great, go die. <laughs> go join the army, get shot on the front lines. Let women lose without the handicap and people will learn the rule. And then the women who are absolutely exceptional will actually have done so of their own accord and no one will have to look at them twice and think, hey, you're only here because you're a woman and the government forced you into this position. Yeah, there, there's an unspoken assu yeah, there's, there's a spoken assumption here that is um, uh, being made by a lot of people, both by Nick and Lauren. Uh, poor human nature, what horrible crimes have been com committed in thy name. Every fool from king to policeman, from flat-headed parson to visionless dabbler in science, presumes to speak authoritatively of human nature. The greater the mental charlatan, the more definite his insistence on the wickedness and weakness of human nature. Yet how can anyone speak of it today with every soul in a prison, with every heart fettered, wounded, and maimed? What? Emma Goldman. The fact of the matter is, is that this idea that the women are homemakers and mothers, like, yes, they are literally mothers. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have been on this planet as a species for 250,000 years. For 244,000 years, we did not have the state and lived as nomadic hunter-gatherers. And if we look both at the historical fossil record and at contemporary um, uh, hunter-gatherers today, you find that these are the most gender equal societies on the planet because everyone has to be educated in every aspect of the culture. So really we're talking, when you guys are talking about this being somehow like women's immutable essence, it's just not true. It is objectively wrong. It is. It just feels like an immutable essence. Wait, who did the realize. gathering? Wait, what is? Uh, wait, what is? Who the did the gathering essence? though? They both did. Everyone in the no, society. No, don't. The hunting and true. gathering. It depends. The hunters. It de it depends the hunters on... left for weeks on end, and the gatherers had to go every single day to feed the tribe or whatever yeah, the there, community there at the time. But of... the hunters. No, yes, this You're is just actually. Saying this. It's not true. This... One second. Yeah, I do want to hear from Stardust. I Stardust. I think this is like an old idea. Yeah. Uh, so, so um, it, it depends on on the society, right? Because uh, you know, believe it or not, we live in a very diverse place, and even traditionally, things are pretty diverse. But again, I would reiterate that even in um, in these more traditional societies, um, maybe women uh, were more confined to certain types of work, but they still worked. 
right? And children worked too. And just because things, like Doobie made this excellent point earlier, just because things were um, a certain way in traditional society doesn't mean that they're good. Children also died a whole lot more. <laughs> children also participated in dangerous work, uh, you know, environments. So, um, so yeah, tradition does not mean that it's going to be better for the family or for the children. But um, I, I, would, I would say that Actually, never mind. I, 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 I haven't heard anyone make the argument that tradition is good because of tradition or that things are good because it's old. It sounded old. like that's I, what I, Nick I, was saying. No, no, no. I, he yeah, exactly, sounded, he yeah. said exactly no. the opposite well, that's of that. What, that's what he I was asking. Like, no, 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 no. He said, I'm not arguing for these things because they're old or because they're tradition. He said he's arguing for them because they are in line with human nature. So we have to actually... Yes, which he doesn't know. He's well, just but but also, oh, yeah, he's basing it... You have to make an argument against human nature. Uh, Lauren, okay, if I if right I can respond to you, just right? Saying, up. You Seriously, guys think it's I don't know what is it's with old. you guys. Okay, so just Brent, no offense, but you have a problem of interrupting people. So stop mm -hmm. it. And then All okay, right. the last time before you interrupted, Lauren, I think you were speaking, and then Stardust will come to you after, and then last will come to Brent and after everybody else. Oh no, yeah, I was basically just saying that the point being made here isn't that tradition is good because it's tradition. Quite the opposite. In fact, I think I've I've attacked the idea that we need to emulate the 50s the idea here is what society works best in line with human nature so the argument has to be around what is the nature of a woman and what is the nature of a man are women more timid are women more suited in better role in better roles that are more towards being a mother towards being etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, are men more suited as hunters I, I i'd rather hear the leftists on the panel engage with that concept rather than uh, this appeal to you guys just think you know it's good because it's tradition because i haven't heard that argument made once Okay, so I, I guess uh, and to respond to that, then, um, uh, I guess what I would say is that, you know, there's no doubt that there are differences between men and women. There's no doubt that men and women gravitate to different things, even in the most, um, you know, gender equal um, countries, you'll see men and women actually diverge even more than they do uh, normally uh, in which careers they choose, right? But they're still choosing careers, um, so uh, I'm not denying that there are there are certain trends um, among based like based on your biology and based on on your your uh, your your sex. Right. But um, there are always going to be outliers. And I think these outliers are a lot more common than we give credit to, uh, you know, and, and there are ways that also we benefit from women being in the workplace. Women, there have been studies that show that women might be making better doctors than men. Um, you know, there, uh, you know, it, it, so, I mean, it, it's, it, yeah, that's all, that's what I would say in response to that. So. Yeah. Let me just jump in here and say, uh, you know, where all this comes from with nature, it, it comes from biology. It comes from what we know about biology and what we know about physicality. And, you know, you can throw your head back like that, but women are weaker than men. And so, you know, Lauren says, well, why don't we just let the men compete with the women? And, you know, that makes sense if we're talking about a controlled sort of constructed competition with rules and a referee and things like that. But the world is not like that. The state of nature is not like that. There are not rules and there's not a referee and there's not a sort of artificial surrogate goal. There is just all against all. And the kinds of societies that emerge from that throughout all of history, everywhere. And, and I love when leftists bring this up. They're like, well, we found a village in the Amazon jungle where the, there was a woman priestess or something like that. It's like, okay, but every other civilization, whether it's the Arabs or it's the Russians, Chinese, Japanese, Europeans, it's male kings, it's male generals, it's male dominated, male superpowers. That was the Soviet Union, that was Rome, that was America, that's all of it. Um, and, and primarily that kind of situation prevails because men are physically stronger. And when it comes down to it in the world, men can make women do what they want because they are stronger. Also, and, and this goes back to the ancient role of men as well as, and, and you could say, oh, well, we have the United Nations now, so strength doesn't matter. Men are historically the hunters. Men are the ones that went out and fought the game. Men are or, or fought to kill the game and bring them back home to eat. Adult men are also smarter than women as well. Men can outsmart women. They can also beat women up. And that's why men are the kings, the philosophers, the mathematicians, engineers. And, and again, the only reason why this is not the case anymore, the only reason why we have this kind of 
there's this challenge from women in the society is because they're being given affirmative action. They're essentially being paid by the state. It's essentially a subsidy. There's all kinds of quotas in academia. There's quotas in the workplace. And, and essentially, it's like the government is paying these people to be these things. In any kind of normal society, there's no way they would be able to compete with men. So the, the question is not, you know, we'll let women compete with men. If you subtracted all the sort of constructs of society, men would win every competition and they beat women up if they couldn't. And so they'd win those too. It's only that we have this kind of managerial state where they're enforcing, they're enforcing and trying to create an artificial equality where there is no such thing, not in fact, not in theory. And so if we took all of that away, the sort of natural thing would resume. And it's always fighting back. You see that in women's preferences as children. You, you see that here. even in preferences for women as adults. I got five women's more minutes. Women's nature and rebellion against what's being pushed on them you artificially. It. It's, it's irrepressible. I want to bump it over to Doobie or... Oh, I got five more minutes. So can I respond to that? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Nick, I was saying the opposite of what you just said, I'm saying. I, I'm saying allow women to compete in that free-for-all and then allow people to naturally see them fail without the structure, without the rules, and then the women who are absolutely exceptional, if they succeed, they'll succeed because of their own merit. Um, I, I am curious, though, what who do you think structured the society where women are getting all of this affirmative action? Because assuming that men are so powerful, which I do believe they are stronger and on average smarter. This is just statistical truths. Um, would there not be a, some sort of concept that it was men that created and structured the society to a degree, especially because they had power for so long. And perhaps the issue is less with all women causing this, but with some moral failing in men as well that allowed them to allow this civilization to persist. It was the Jews, um, <laughs> and Jews are feminine. What did I true. say, guys? That's fr frankly, that's Goodbye just true. my YouTube. Okay, it <laughs> was. Uh, Thanks, it it was James. 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 <laughs> Sign for ah, music. Yes. Cannot. Yeah, we're going to move on. We're going to move from this topic. I think Doobie, if you haven't, if you haven't spoken yeah, for a while. I, okay, yeah, wait. So is this, is this all? So is this the Jews' fault, Nick, or is this women's fault? <laughs> it's my fault. Let's not talk about. Let's go ahead, Doobie. Can I, um, so I, I think it's kind of ridiculous that we're appealing to the fact that women were better suited to stay in the cave with kids in hunter-gatherer societies um, or behind walls or whatever the fuck. When we're communicating with each other, we're communicating with each other across the fucking planet uh, in real time through esoteric lightning magic, and I'm a fucking frog, right? I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, and again, maybe it worked back then, right? Sure. But men don't need to go out and hunt mammoths anymore, right? There are plenty of jobs that need to be done to sustain our society that don't require physical strength. Our understanding of the roles of men, of men and women, I think, are going to be molded by the circumstances we're in. And in the modern day, it's very beneficial to our society to have women involved in the workplace, in academia, and in, and in politics. So give me a good reason. Uh, tell me, give me a way that it's that uh, the uh, gender roles and social norms of the caveman days of the medieval period. Are, are useful today? Why are they more useful than what we're doing right now? Wait, I have to disagree with you that you don't think men need to be strong or even have strength in order to I defend said. your pro Well, you kind of did say there's no need no, for men, I said men to don't be need able to. Go out and to... Hunt mammoths anymore, right? We don't yeah. need to send people. Yeah, out every you day said they don't need the physical strength. They don't need that physical strength. They don't. They can buy a yeah, yeah, a yeah, you do. Suddenly, a lot less strength is running at you. You can shoot him in the fucking face, right? It's fine. But you need the strength in order to defend your property at the end of the day. Because I would say the strength the needed to you defend your property is still nothing in comparison to like going out and hunting and the endurance required enough, to go out and hunt at for you long had a long periods of time you had a horse who the fuck you, has a horse these days yeah, yeah like, you know, not, back in the days when they did the hunting I, they were hunting with the war on women though <laughs> so uh, does, does anyone horses suck compared to a car i do alex stein like, we haven't heard hunting from is from not you in a while go ahead alex yeah well when we talk about the strength when we talk about the strength of men versus women, I mean, it's obvious that men are stronger than women, but I don't know how that necessarily, you know, means there's a war on women because we're stronger. Uh, so I'm kind of confused oh, where the, why the argument's gone in that I mean, direction. I keep making this point and it's like, I, th I think it should be very apparent. And I think Doobie is, or yeah, Doobie is like keying into this, which is that like the economy has changed you. such that women can contribute a lot more with a lot less muscle power. And when women are competing with men in a lot of these arenas, for example, like 
the intellectual arena of like publishing papers, right? Like that is not the kind of competition where you're worried about the physical safety of women if they're losing the competition, which is why I'm sympathetic to what Lauren Southern is saying when she's saying that like, just let women compete with men. Cause like women can compete with men in the area of like STEM papers. And let's say women mostly lose cause men are better at like the, the right tail of the distribution of intellectual competency. Let's say most women lose, well, you're still going to have women who are contributing to the general advancement of science and knowledge in that case, even if they're not getting the most prestigious awards and papers. So like, I think that like, what we really care about is just making sure that we are maximally utilizing every part of our culture to create the, the best kind of society we can. And the way to do that is to allow women to contribute in a way that doesn't necessarily take away from their child rearing and from their motherhood, which is totally possible. Uh, if I can just, um, I just want to say real quick, James, um, people are saying that you should stop streaming on Twitch because um, I believe Nick is banned on Twitch. So. Nick, are you okay with being uh, on Twitch? I don't care, but you know, if you want to, if you don't want your channel to be banned, I you like know. to. Why don't you say something earlier? Let's let it fly. This. Go ahead. Uh, oh, by the way, so Lauren has to go. So Lauren, any closing words before Lauren's going to be replaced by someone who decided they would jump in on Lauren's behalf? But any last words before you do have to take off Lauren? <laughs> Muted myself. Woman moment. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I have to take off so quick. It would have been fun to stay around longer. I would have enjoyed. Well, I'll, I'll definitely be back on an evening where I have more time. Um, everyone, if you want to continue watching the stream, you can go to Modern Day Debate on YouTube. Check that out. I haven't quite figured out how to do a stream raid thing, so I'm sorry, my friend, but hopefully they'll find it. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming on. Thanks so much. See you, Lauren. All right, cheers. Have a good one, guys. See you, Lauren.